Uh, Director Tennant, uh, uh, first of all, uh, before I get into the questions, I want to uh, say that I think there's five general things that's got to be understood uh, uh, that made uh, the job of uh, being Director of Central Intelligence in the 90s exceptionally difficult. The first is that, and, and, and we're going to have to deal with it and report, that there were significant numbers of Cold War residual problems that we had to deal with. And I think part of the problem was we were so busy celebrating our victory in the Cold War, we didn't pay attention to Yugoslavia. Uh, we, didn't pay, we didn't pay attention to the, the trouble that, that could occur as a consequence in the Middle East. We were struggling to figure out how to deal with transitional problems of the former Soviet Union, et cetera. And I, indeed, I think Afghanistan is one of those Cold War residuals that a lot of us in the 1990s simply were not paying enough attention to. Uh, secondly, I, I, I do think, with great respect to your last statement, I do think that uh, you lack authority and have substantial responsibilities uh, that aren't matched up. And the evidence of that is the last time I checked, I think 35 congressional committees call you up from time to time to ask you to testify on a variety of different subjects, which, which to say the least, sucks up a lot of your time. Thirdly, absent political leadership, there's nothing you can do. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're providing intelligence, you don't make the decisions. Fourthly, I think congressional oversight is exceptionally weak, especially on the Senate side. Uh, fifthly, let me point out, because some of my questions deal, deal with pro your, your term prior, uh, that there was a very tough transition. John Deutsch left in December 1996. Tony Lake was nominated. It took forever. I think you were not confirmed until July of 1997. That was a very, very difficult and very risky uh, transition, in my view. And lastly, let me say that uh, unlike other uh, DCIs, you probably, for the rest of your life, will be like uh, Judge Kevin uh, Thomas Duffy, who was the judge in the, uh, the World Trade Center uh, uh, cases, the Bajinka case. Uh, uh, you're likely to be forever to be a target. And, and uh, you, in other words, you have taken considerable risk beyond what former DCIs have done, and I want to thank you for that. That said, let me get into some questions. I'm going to first talk about the coal. A lot of our commissioners have, have asked questions about the coal, uh, Director Tennant. Uh, it's, it's been raised uh, repeatedly, and, and my, my own view is it, it goes to the heart of our problems of dealing militarily with a significant unconventional military challenge. And what's hard for me to come to grip with today is, is why, with the evidence that we had uh, that the attack was, was, was al-Qaeda, that we were uh, that, and, and an operative uh, that was connected to the, to the bombing to the embassy in Nairobi, why were we so cautious? And why did uh, 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 both the, uh, President Clinton and President Bush, did, why couldn't they see military alternatives to uh, cruise missiles and, and, uh, and the, basically the Normandy invasion? Uh, and it seems to me that, that our failure to respond militarily, in particular, the presidential directive that was put together in 1998 that failed to give the Department of Defense primary authority in dealing with al-Qaeda and terrorism, it seems to me that that contributed substantially to our failure to prevent 9-11. I'll just give you a chance to respond to that because it, there are several questions tucked in there, but do you think PDD-62 was a mistake? Do you think that we waited too long to respond militarily uh, to uh, an organization that we knew had declared war on us and had called the jihad thousands of uh, Islamic men uh, to uh, fight the United States of America. Well, Senator, uh, you've talked to all the policymakers, and, and I'm not going to fudge the question. I'm not the policymaker. They have to calculate the risks, the geopolitical context, what was going on at the time, the nature of the Pakistani regime, what Central Asia looked like, uh, whether, whether, whether or not force could have been used to fact I can't make those decisions. I will say, I will say, that, and I've said publicly, the most important strategic decision that was ultimately made was to take down the sanctuary. When you took down the sanctuary, your operational, your operational opportunities increased, intelligence increased, you put the adversary on the run, uh, and well, generated an enormous amount of intelligence opportunity. It was very helpful. But we heard yesterday that uh, Mr. Picard tell us that, uh, that, that bin Laden in the Afghan uh, uh, sanctuary, in those camps, he was turning out more individuals than we were turning out either at the CIA or FBI. And yet, uh, our military leaders, would, uh, through both the Clinton and the Bush administration, would give you all kinds of reasons why the targets weren't sufficient. And yet, after we were attacked on 9-11, we deployed this uh, special operations in connection with, with, with your individuals that were enormously effective. It seems to me that we had capability, in short, we, that it either didn't get to the attention of the president, he didn't know about it, or for some reason it wasn't used. And, and, and it seems to me that it would have had a very negative impact upon al-Qaeda's capability of attacking the United States. Senator Kerry, I can't take you beyond that, my previous answer. This was, these were tough and difficult policy calls that people were making, 
and I'm just going to have to leave it at that. You've heard from all the policymakers. Uh, they, they all thought about these issues. They were complicated issues, and I'll leave it at that. Well, let me, let me get into my second line, and again, I, th th this, I'm, I'm going to focus on a period of time in, during the transition. So you, you, some of this you're going to – your transition. So some of this you're going to have to be answering uh, both for yourself and perhaps for Director Deutsch as well or uh, whether or not the communication came to you. But one of the most remar remarkable things that staff has uncovered, and we heard it, you heard a piece of it in the, in the testimony of the staff statement, was that Jamal El Fadl uh, comes into court in 2001 and describes what he said when he walked in in 1996. Uh, what he said was uh, uh, that uh, Al Qaeda was a significant military force. Uh, what he said was that uh, Osama bin Laden headed a terrorist organization of his own. He said that it was an organization that was far more than a mechanism to raise money for his terrorist uh, financing role. What he said was that this organization was intended to be the foundation for an Islamic army and had declared the United States as its main enemy long before the public declaration in August of 1996. What he said was that Osama bin Laden had sent top leaders uh, of its weapons trainers into, into Somalia to, shoot down, uh, to provide the Somalis with the weapons used to shoot down the U.S. helicopters and train them and how to use them to accomplish exactly what they did in October 1993. What he said uh, was that bin Laden's organization had done the same thing for the Yemeni squad that carried out the attack uh, uh, aimed at the United States troops in Aden less than a year before. And you, you heard again in the staff statement, we had a, a national intelligence assessment in, 90, in 96, I believe, or 95. 95 and, what, and 97. And what we got is an update that didn't include any of this. What we got was an update that didn't include uh, the information that, that, was, that, that uh, this individual says in court that he delivered to us and he said it was corroborated. So why? Why wasn't it not in the, in the update? Uh, wh why didn't the President of the United States and the key policymakers get this information? Well, I'm sure no, – well, that's, now, now, you're, now you're making the assumption that because it was not in the national intelligence estimate, this data was not broadly disseminated, explained and understood by people at the time, and I believed it was. John. One of the uh, – I, I don't recall, Senator, whether – that particular individual and his testimony was included specifically in the 97 update. What I do know is that in the staff statement, the staff statement failed to note that in the 97 update, we included information <coughs> that bin Laden had been surveilling, people associated with bin Laden had been surveilling institutions in the United States, and that therefore we concluded the likelihood was growing that he would attack in the United States. Uh, that was, I think, the most significant finding in the 97 NIE. And it was also in this period, 1996, that we formed the Bin Laden Issue Station. So we were, Senator, we were you're, very you're, focused on this Senator, issue. This, this is a, a critical issue. Um, I think so. No, it's a critical issue. You're making an assumption that because it's not in a national intelligence estimate, that the way we were organized to brief people, pass product out, talk to them about this, meant that people weren't getting this kind of data. That's just not true. Well, but I, I, I'm not making that presumption. I'm making, first of all, the presumption that the NIE is a foundational document that lots of people use. And that, I mean, this is a very specific set of information that he said in trial he provided to us. Uh, and, and we continue to regard uh, bin Laden, you, you heard in the, in, in, the, in the staff statement, we continue to regard him as a relatively small threat. I didn't know. I didn't know in 1996 or 1997 that bin Laden was responsible for sending uh, forces down into Somalia to shoot down the, uh, uh, our Black Hawk helicopters. I didn't, I didn't have a sense that this is what he was doing. And, and, and just to ask you, I, mean, I know that this is your transitional moment, so this is 96 to 97. Did you ever have a conversation with President Clinton where you told him that al-Qaeda was a substantial military effort, that they were responsible for shooting down our, our, our helicopters in, in, in Mogadishu, that uh, there was a, a, a substantial military threat to the United States of America, that we ought to ramp this guy up to the top of the list? Sir, I will go back and look at my—I didn't come prepared with what happened in 97. I'll go back and look at my records, look at the data dissemination, go back through the meetings that were held at the time, and give you an answer to the question. I, I say, Director, this is, this is reason I think this is central, because we have heard, I mean, I've heard a, a series of excuses from Sandy Berger, Bill Cohen, Madeleine Albright, Don Rumsfeld, Condoleezza Rice, all kinds of rationalizations. And one of the things I've heard over and over and over was the American public wouldn't have supported any action had 
we take an action before 9-11. Now, I got to tell you, I think if the President of the United States of America had come and said that Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda is responsible for shooting down a Black Hawk helicopter in Mogadishu in 1993, I believe that that speech would have galvanized the United States of America against bin Laden. And would have prevented, I think, would have, would have given you permission to do operations that you didn't have permission to do, would have changed the whole dynamic. I mean, I just can't believe that if the President of the United States had said that in 1994, 95, 96, I mean, whenever you get to walk in in 96, if you'd have done it in 96 or 97, I just can't believe the public opinion wouldn't have been on his side just like that. Don't you think so? Sir, I'll go back and look at it all and come back to you. Well, I mean, it... it I might mention in that connection, since, Senator, you're talking about the extent to which various publications in this period included warnings about bin Laden and also his activities and the role of Afghanistan and so forth. But uh, I mentioned what I had said earlier about the 97 NIE. In, in 2001, uh, there was an NIE that I don't think your staff statement mentions about Afghanistan. It included a... Uh, an extensive discussion of the camp structure, the camp architecture in Afghanistan. It noted that uh, the coal bombers had trained in those camps. It noted that Rassam, who had been involved in the Millennium Plot, had been in those camps. So that's something uh, that was laid out in a national intelligence estimate. Well, and it's, as the director has pointed out, it's it's but, a matter of argument whether that galvanizes policy to do but, something or not. Well, Glock and I, I appreciate it. We, we, we heard, uh, uh, and now that we've, we've seen this uh, August 6th uh, presidential daily briefing, after we've seen that August uh, presidential daily briefing, it's causing me I mean, to sort of have serious questions about how these daily briefings are organized. But, but my guess is the president has not seen, uh, the President Bush has not seen the information about who Al Qaeda was. That he would, my guess is that President Bush today, he may just be discovering it for the first time, that we knew in 1996 that bin Laden was responsible for shooting out helicopters in Mogadishu. Uh, and, you know, and this was in, uh, but, you know, this was in the trial in 2001. And, it, and, it, it, and it, it, it doesn't appear to me that he was briefed in transition. It doesn't appear to me that that was brought to his attention. In other words, I mean, I think even... Uh, as late as 2001, we were describing bin Laden as a terrorist, not somebody that had a substantial army and substantial capability and a history that went back uh, long before 1998. I mean, do you, 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 the president says you meet with him practically every day. Did you bring that presentation to him? Did you describe uh, as uh, the walk-in did in 1996? Uh, as he described in the trial in 2001, did you bring that information to the president and say, this is an army that's been, in, that's been engaged in an effort against the United States of America all the way back at least until 1993? Well, whether, whether I took it back in 93 or not, sir, I don't recall, but we certainly walked through <coughs> al-Qaeda, its organization, the threat it posed, its previous affiliation with bombings and activities uh, over a concerted period of time. But I'll go back and look at whether that was specifically raised. I don't recall it. I appreciate it. I'm, and I'm going to do something I shouldn't do, which is yield back my time before my green light, before my red light goes on. So, Mr. Chairman, you may have.